Hey folks, yeah, Mac T over at Rivian and uh, gonna go the first mile. That's right, behind me is the Rivian facility where they make the R1T uh, pickup trucks that they're gonna have already started selling. So, as curiosity killed the cat, I figured what the heck, I'll go check out an EV pickup truck and see what it's like and see what it is all about. Everybody talks about them. I personally never driven one, but hey, let's go ahead and check it out and see what they have to show us and uh, do a little something different on the old Mac T garage. There we go. Got the facility right here and they got the first mile set up over in this area. Not quite sure what we're looking at, but uh, get out there and we'll be able to check it all out looks like they got some of the Rivian set up so we'll see what they got to offer and uh, check out the pickup trucks correct just a little buttons here fold it up that's magnetic you got a kit this is a this is a jack kit or what is this that's actually the that's the portable charger like I'm standard oh portable charger yeah and you guys sell them with frisbees too? Oh, I, I wish. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, this is emergency uh, release uh, right here. Put some frisbees or washer things. fluid. Yeah, you got your standard JC seven seventy two charger. And then you flip this guy open, and then it turns into a DC fast charger. So you have two different charging options, which is nice. Okay, now they looking forward to changing that to a universal charger because everybody wants to do it different, right? Um, so the, so the JC7072 is like the universal, like, EV charger right now, so, and along with the DC, like a lot of different... Like things. Europe? If it, Europe, it would... It, I actually don't know what's most common in Europe and whatnot, but I do know for the I, states... I do know in Europe they're going to a universal charging port, which Tesla is... Do you know what kind of port it is? I don't know what it is, but they're mandating that it be universal for all EVs. I love that, because Tesla is not universal. Tesla's chargers are only specific... Tesla to will be, otherwise they won't be able to sell vehicles. Yeah. Seriously, Europe I'm just all, made it a law, so I'm they got to do that. it. I'm all for that. Well, it's like USB chargers. I mean, make them universal. Seriously, these are all LED lights, then. Mm-hmm. Yep. What's it cost for the headlight? That's a great question. That I actually don't know the answer to. About uh, fifty, probably. <laughs> probably more. <laughs> I'm guessing four or five. My car is like two grand, so and it's for the LED. whole assembly. No, for one headlight. Oh yeah, that's what I mean. For the, for whole, the whole assembly. assembly. Yeah. Drive mode, storage units, capabilities for What's the max water height that this thing can go? That's a great question. Um I actually don't know that as of now and it's something that it's probably not an exact number that we can say for legal purposes, but uh yeah, you could definitely like look on Rivian.com for more information regarding that. Yeah, I just wondering if I want to go across something and I got water coming up to the top of the I tires. Do know, I do know that um, so the, we just uh, employed a lot of media drives in Breckenridge, Colorado, mm -hmm. where a lot of different media channels really put this truck to the test. And I do know there was a lot of water um, waiting and whatnot through creeks and like small rivers and whatnot. So. In terms of water, it's it's capable of it, but it's just the whole number of things that I, I don't really know. How about the, can the battery uh, frame underneath support the full weight of the truck on a sharp rock? That is correct. Um, that's correct. I don't know it, like the entire thing and a certain number regarding that, but I do know with the off-road package, it comes with tow hooks and carbon fiber reinforcing on the bottom part. So. In the situation that you did scrape some rocks or roots and whatnot on mm -hmm. the it would, it would protect that. Okay. Where is the battery at? So the, yeah, yeah. It's basically um, the, the whole vehicle is built on what we call a platform. So the batteries are all laid out um, really low. They're laid out through the base of the vehicle. And then we have the, all the electronics and whatnot in between uh, like each wheel, so basically over that. Now, all four wheels, you guys, I think I saw you, didn't they say it could do like a, a tank, turn? tank turn? Yeah, 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 that's Does, a sweet feature. Unfortunately, we don't have that incorporated 
with uh, the current launch of our R1T, just for safety purposes, there are some there are some things going with the software and whatnot. But yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully, we'll be able to employ that in, in future um, in future over there updates to our software. Okay, this could tow eleven thousand pounds. You said. That's correct. So it's twenty below zero. I got eleven thousand or ten thousand pounds. I'm towing. How far can I tow it before the battery dies up a mountain? Man, you're asking some good questions. <laughs> um, so in terms of... Am I going to run out of power at 100 miles? So in terms of battery range, what we're telling people is that at a maximum, you're going to have a loss of about half. So say you're at 300 miles of charge and you're towing um, around 10,000 or full capacity 11,000. You can imagine to lose 150 of mileage. Um, then again, there are different factors that also affect it, such as you know, driving style, if it's aggressive or not. Um, so temperature at maximum, at maximum about half. I don't I don't know how temperature affects that. Um, well, I'm assuming it's going to drop the battery charge even more, being it's 20 below. So that, that is something that you lose what 10 15 percent out of out of I, cold I, weather. I honestly couldn't tell, yeah. But that's okay, a, that's a great so question. the Mojave Desert is we're gonna, what we're I, gonna what do I it. Can't, what I can say is it's a bigger killer, of <laughs> the it's cold is when you notice the just, you know, heat kills the tested, yeah. The, the rain, some of the hottest places here, Death, Death Valley and Peak Heats, or Wisconsin and Michigan, and some of the coldest times of the year. So, what I do know is, is that there has been testing done to ensure battery life stays as, as consistent as possible compared to other electric vehicles in the marketplace. So, if I'm a contractor and I got a 8,000 pound uh, skid steer on a trailer, comes out to 10,000 pounds, and I got to drive 200 miles to the job site, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna make it. Um, so what you can do is, uh, with our user interface, you can input actually your destination in the navigation. And what it will do is, you can select a couple options for different types of chargers, and it'll show you locations where those chargers will be on the way to your destination. So, in the case that if you were low on battery and you needed a little extra charge, you could choose what type of charger and see it where uh, those chargers are going to be along your route. Okay. So basically, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to pay my employees more. Because <laughs> I'm gonna have to make them wait to recharge, going there and coming back. So we're probably. I think, I think they're good for the daily drive and individuals, but I don't, suburbia. Not, not quite there for a contractor yet. Yeah, uh, suburbia. We'll get there. <laughs> More chargers. I used to be the old, you know, big V8 gas, gas only. Yeah, y'all need to release but like a Maverick like there yet. Yeah, yeah. For like a contract release or I, I, I agree. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. There you go. Hey, Vicky, you sit on that. <laughs> no. <laughs> they said you can sit on this thing. You can sit on it? Oh, it's... Yeah. No, it don't give. <laughs> it don't give. No. It's solid. That's a good seat, isn't it? Holy cow. Can you fit in there? <laughs> I'm making, <Yeah. laughs> just giving Vicky all sorts of ideas here. I just saw a baby go. Here we got speakers in the doors and everything else. Yes. Looks so like it got a USB charger. I don't know what that is. Cargo. Works pretty good. Even got a little bit of touch pad back here. Full size spare. Yeah, that's nice. Definitely needed. We got charging ports. I mean, it seems like it'd be light. Cable ties. My my question is, is you got to get up in there. You're gonna have to do some oomph to get that tire it's out. Aluminum. So I will yeah. tell you what. Because you ain't gonna be able to pull this tire out of this way. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to get up here. Yeah, so really, what yeah there's some there. there's some little kids crawling through there like it's a you know jungle toy or something. Check that out. All sorts of storage under here. What's the weight of this uh, tent thing? The tent weighs 100. 
14 something, basically 115. Okay. What weight can it hold? 600. 600? Hey, I'm in the money. That's right. You and at least one buddy, if not two, depending yeah. who you got around. Well, me and then the, my daughters and my wife, they'd make up the rest of it. <laughs> so we'd still be within spec. There you go. Yeah. Is that a shorter bed than that one? The beds are all the same. Oh, they are? Yep. Yeah, four and a half feet. That's right. It's the stripes. <laughs> <laughs> and then with the tailgate down, it's the seven feet. Are all calipers on all trucks the yellow. yellow? Yep. You guys don't have red? Because red adds like 100 horsepower, don't it? <laughs> 200 feet stopping power. <laughs> So how much that tent cost? You'd have to check the configurator on that. I'm not sure on it. Could I put my own tent up on there? If it can, if it has like a universal connection point to get onto crossbars. Mm. What if I just put a piece of plywood on there and bolted it down? Well then, uh, that's going to be on you and see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, this, these crossbars can hold 250 pounds dynamic. So while you're driving. Right now. Okay. Yeah, and then static, it's 700 and something. Oh, okay. So the idea is there, it's enough for these crossbars to hold 115 pounds plus the 600. Oh, okay. And they can handle that while it's stationary. That's cool. Yeah, and those, of course, go on top as well, like they have over there. And that folds down and gets put in the back? or no, it just folds. It just folds? Will it fit in there? No, no. Like, this is hard set folds. Okay. And then there's a cover you put on top of it, zip it closed so it's wet. Oh, so you just right. haul and it and around. It there. And then so that, that way when it's folded, it's about that height. So that way if you had something long on top, it wouldn't hit the tent when you're driving. Well, now, this has a power uh, deal on it, right? The tunnel. tunnel. Power, yep. So it'll still be able to close even exactly. with this on it. Cool. Yep. You still have the whole access. So I bed. could put the kids in back exactly. and just shut Someone it? Someone was talking about the idea of eventually getting... You sat in that part of the tent. But you didn't lock me up in there. See? What's the weight limit on this ladder? The, the weight limit for the tent is 600 pounds. So the ladder's, I think we'll... Uh, and the ladder is 150 pounds? I can't even crawl up that thing. The kids are going up there. I ain't. 150 <laughs> pounds? Jeez. That's not going to cover. Uh, how do they say that? One one young lady told me this is more mature men. That's what she called me. Vicky, you buying one now? No. Not gonna ditch your edge for a for I'm not a Rivian? Ready for that yet. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe someday. I love my edge a little too much. I guess these are some of the colors. I think that's interiors. For interiors that we can see for some of the vehicles. And we got the color panels for the different colors. For all of them. And then some other compass yellow, LA silver, red canyon, midnight, and forest green. Launch green. L cap granite. Glacier white, Rivian blue, and limestone. Right here, we got limestone. So, yeah, lots of different colors. Again, all matching up for the body panels for the cutouts they have for that. Here comes a Rivian. He's gonna stop or swerve?
especially when you take your foot right off when you take it off the gas. It's almost it's like the brakes. Off. Yeah. Like I said, it's just like the old uh, race track. Put the trigger down. Floor it, you're flying off the track, you're crashing into the wall. You don't want easy, you control it, you let off and stop. No, they're going all the was well, this the racetrack or just a test track? It's a test track. Okay. It used to be Mitsubishi's, and all they did was just. Oh, they used to test on here? Yeah. Um, all they did here was just put up new stuff. The test track is. Yeah. They need to go up that dirt hill. Why would Too I bad, mean? I guess. If I was out in the trails and it was raining, you'd have to go up it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get them dirty. Oh, that's half the fun. Yeah. Where is this? It probably wouldn't go up. It probably wouldn't go up. Oh, here we go. Oh, come on. Floor it. <laughs> Just gotta floor it. Here we go. Okay, okay, here we go. Zoom, zoom. There we go. Look at that thing go. Holy cow. They're moving pretty good. Wow. Well, maybe this person will go a little harder into the corner. What do you say? A little more assured? No. They probably won't let them because there's people here. There's two mounts here, right? So this is where the crossbars would go. The R1S would have another, uh, a third one on each side because it, it extends further down. Uh, the water tank is right behind here. You, you could actually, if you want to go around the vehicle, you can see it. Three points of view. Yeah. What do you think? That sounds like glamping to me. Yeah, it sounds like glamping. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, a lot of stuff, right? Where'd the pans go then? The pots and pans right there. Right here? Yep. This is so spacious. That's, yeah, that's what we hear all the time. Oh, okay, in the back? Oh, yeah, and it really is. I mean, I've gone through five or six different tents, REI, North Face, all that type of stuff. <laughs> this is a camp shuttle that we we're seeing on the stove. You also, pull that out at the end and take the camp stoves out, and you can put it put a tray there that slides in and out to load everything up for storage. Hey, folks, Mac T, Mac D Garage, and uh, yeah, that was some interesting visiting of the uh, Rivian First Mile. Uh, I'm going to recap what I came out with this is that uh, number one, pros and cons. The pros is this truck can be outfitted for a lot of things. Uh, camping, road use, uh, sporty, uh, rough terrain, all this good stuff. They, they have uh, undercarriage uh, pinnings, I guess, if you want to go do some rock crawling and everything else that... Uh, would help protect the batteries underneath. Uh, the plug-in to charge it is uh, remarkably uh, universal in nature. That something you're not going to get, but I think that uh, they're planning ahead for uh, future universal charger uh, concepts. In other words, uh, this Tesla only thing and all these other manufacturers that have their proprietary chargers is eventually going to come out to a universal charger uh, sort of like uh, <clears throat> you know cell phones USB C's all this stuff it, it needs to be universal folks that way when you pull up to a charger you can actually charge your car without adapters and everything else so uh, yeah they're planning ahead on that so that's good foresight on their part on that aspect and they got a lot of foresight uh, you know, in some of the convenience features of the truck that I really liked, uh, the pass-through was fantastic, and uh, things that you can add for uh, cooking and all this other stuff, very, very good. The storage under the seats, uh, 
it, it was fantastic. The sound system was pretty good. I had to block it out for reasons of uh, copyright. So if you see some of them don't have sound, then you know why. But uh, you know, they're I think they're playing. Uh, who? What was it? Uh, I figure what group? All, they were all synced. They're all playing the same music. The whole thing. All the trucks had the same music. Uh, they were playing. Uh, not notably another one bites the dust and, you know that was the group they're playing and I can't remember I'm saving my life and I know who they are but uh, anyway uh, that that was all unique on its own they had a lot of different setups that you could go into the tent and and the weight capacities and the ladders and everything all fully functional uh, really was a functional vehicle as far as if you're going to short trip it, okay? Uh, the biggest setback I saw was once you start loading up max capacity of the truck, and I don't know what the maximum capacity of it was, but, you know, if you're a single person driving your truck to go to work for the Rivian, hey, it'll work great for you city dwellers. Fantastic. Drive 5, 10, 15, 20 miles, go to work, come back home, 30 miles a day, maybe, uh, I see no problems in the truck. I basically came away with the fact that this is an urban cowboy truck. That's all it is. It has no capabilities to tow. And I say this in that they say, yes, it can tow 11,000 pounds. But really what it came down to after some serious questioning was 11,000 pounds on a flat road in ideal weather conditions they could get hundred and fifty miles towing capacity maximum before you'd be out of juice now if you add cold weather or high heat and then mountains you're probably down to about seventy eighty miles for towing that's right seventy or eighty miles so uh... Ultimately, what I came out with this is, yes, it's fast. Yes, it'll take you to the grocery store and get you your groceries. It will be a great city truck. It is not a long-distance construction, uh, towing, uh, recreational RV towing, or anything like that truck. You will find that, just like uh, others on YouTube have done, somebody took a Tesla and, and towed. Well, the towing came out to about 80 miles. They'd have to stop for an hour or so on end and recharge. That nine-hour trip they took took them an additional 10 hours just for charging. So the trucks aren't going to work. Tow vehicles, they're not. Electric vehicle trucks, tow vehicles, they're not. That's what it comes down to. Uh, I don't know any construction company that I know that would buy an electric vehicle to do their job. One, it just wouldn't work. You get out to the sites, they're remote, they don't have charging capabilities out there. These are new construction areas, power is at a premium, and it just isn't going to work. They got to tow heavy equipment out there, they got to use the truck all day long, and, and trust me, in the cold weather, these guys go and sit in their truck and they run the heat and eat their lunch work on their cell phones, whatever. Or when they take breaks, they're in there. So you can add this all up, and then for a, a construction company, for example, and doing jobs, you got to figure in the hours you're paying these guys to sit there trying to get back to your office with the truck and then charging it. Or you have them stay in a remote location. Now where are you going to charge it? they got to find a charger. There's not that many chargers at hotels, folks. There really aren't. And then if you start upping the number of trucks, the hotels aren't going to do. They're going to start charging you for it. Now you got to pay extra wages. you got to find hotels that, that actually have a charger. And then if they can't get the charger because they're only doing uh, you know, eight-hour charge because they only got a level two charger, and now they only got three chargers, and they show up working you know, all day, and they're late, and the, the three chargers are used. There are problems here, and then the hotels, you know, how much are they willing to spend to accommodate your EV? Uh, that's going to be another deal. 
and I'm sure they're going to charge you for it. They're going to have you swipe your card and then charge your room for the for the charge. It's pretty simple. They get, they're not in it to lose money. So I don't see towing vehicles such as pickup trucks and SUVs having to worry about electric vehicles taking their place. Uh, that there is a no, non-starter. And it's going to take years and years and years before that's even an equivalency of anything. And yes, they do have delivery trucks. Yes, I know that. But those delivery trucks are short runs. And they go back to the home office and charge overnight. Yeah, they have their place. Like I said, they are urban dweller, uh, urban cowboy vehicles. That's all they are. And, uh, you know, the chargers themselves... 32 amps off your system. So if you got a 100 amp system in your house, if you're running your AC and the AC takes 50 amps, and then you want to plug in the toaster, use the microwave, you're using a lot of amps up really quick, and uh, it's just not going to be worth it. My house is not set up for uh, charging EV. So uh, they give you a plug. You can plug it into a 220. It takes nine and a half hours to charge from 20% uh, charge. And then uh, on top of it, you then have to take and uh, run the wiring through your garage. And if you don't have power, then you have to pay the three to five thousand dollars to upgrade your electricity. And if you have a hundred amps, you then have to pay to have your amperage upgraded to two hundred amps, which is going to mean all new panels and then all new wiring. So then you're going to go on and on and on, and you're going to spend a lot of money just trying to plug in your EV at night so you can charge it at home. So, uh, yeah, it's not for me. Uh, I would never use an EV as a tow vehicle because, quite frankly, I can fill up a tank of gas and tow and get where I want to go and be sitting in the hotel hot tub, uh, you know, waiting for my buddy with his EV to show up the next day. So, anyway, uh, that's what I took out of the Rivian. It's a good vehicle if you want to spend a premium of $70,000 not counting the discount or anything else that goes with it uh, but it's upwards towards under seventy thousand dollars and quite frankly that's a lot of money to pay for something that you're gonna have to also spend another three to five thousand dollars on just to be able to charge it at home and then you're gonna pay for electricity on the road uh, most places require a credit card yes it ain't free uh, and if they are free they're slow chargers so uh, you're not getting very far uh, with that but hey it is what it is I'm not too concerned about the RV world being inundated with electric vehicles because it just isn't gonna happen we aren't there yet but if you want to spend 70,000 on an electric vehicle to say you're uh, green <laughs> go for it uh, you just know that you're paying a premium for that and uh, I just can't see that being a good deal so anyway there's a lot better vehicles out there to tow with than an EV that's my take on it folks like subscribe join Mac T garage on YouTube and also join the group in Facebook I also have a MeWe group called Ford electric vehicles you can go in there and we can talk all day long about electric vehicles and their pros and cons and everything you want on there but Mac T uh, is present on there also on MeWe Mac T garage but Ford electric vehicles on me we look it up join up and uh we could talk about them all day long i'm more than willing my feet hit the floor today i'm having a great day i want you to have a great day too band of one's got some great music at the end and mercy grills always got a couple of one-liners thank you for watching mac t's videos and remember to like and subscribe this is a mercy go production